Hey guys and gals, it's me, your old buddy, Mr. Moose, back with another edition of Air Hauler 2. Uh, this is a video that is long since overdue. Um, today we're going to talk about some changes that happened uh, in the patch a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that being a major change to the way the economy functions in the game. Uh, as well as just kind of bring you guys up to date on where I'm at. Now I meant to do this video about a week ago and uh, it's just kind of slipped through the cracks. So let's get on with it. When we last left off, I was building a facility over here in Houston. I got that started uh, in the video and uh, it was gonna take 48 hours uh, for that to actually process and open up. It has done such and I went ahead and slapped down a factory to make pilot watches there. Uh, and then of course I have my factory over here in Gulf Shores that was making automotive parts and things looked really, really bright. And uh, we were bringing in money, almost too much money to be honest with you. The amount of money that I was making off the factories. Um, I was really starting to worry that the amount of money was going to start to detract from the game because it was just way too simple to make money. It really was. Um, but some changes have happened in the game and factories don't necessarily work the same way as they did before. Um, the materials that you make out of it are no longer sold at airports. As a matter of fact, all of the tier two and tier three items that you make have been removed from airports. You can't purchase them there, uh, which means you can't just turn around and make uh, materials really easily. Uh, and you can't just go ahead and um, and sell things that you manufacture at the airports. You actually have to uh, find people to buy the materials that you make, which is pretty cool. Um, it adds a new aspect into it. It changes the way the economy works a little bit in the game, but I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not gonna make it any less simple to make money in the game, uh, but we'll cover that in just a little bit. Uh, as well so uh, but yeah we we got the base opened up over here I grinded and grinded and I have finally made it up to level 40 uh, which means now I can take out a loan it also means I can hire pilots to fly my aircraft which you know I've been holding on to that Skyhawk uh, for a long time and then uh, I did go ahead and buy a chieftain uh, which meant I could go ahead and put somebody in a Comanche which I haven't done yet I've hired my first pilot uh, but I haven't done that financially. I'm sitting on half a million dollars 532,182 though that money's gonna go away real quick in just a moment as we uh, Open a new factory up and we explore the world of missions uh, Pilots like I said, I hired one pilot. His name is sky pigeon, which is kind of funny uh, And he is doing a little job for me. I've got him flying over well, he's actually sitting at the airport. We need to, to actually send him off uh, to pick up some materials for us. He's uh, basically on shuttle service today. Uh, I need some chemicals for a factory I'm getting ready to build. Man, he's gonna go grab them for me. Uh, Fleet-wise, I did go ahead and buy a Chieftain. Absolutely love the plane. We'll do a lot of flights in it. Uh, I also, uh, happened to run across a Grand Caravan that was sitting on the uh, second-hand lot. Uh, it was only a half a million dollars to get it. It's 61% uh, uh, durability, but uh, it works like a champ. So I went ahead and picked it up up in Mississippi. Uh, it was conveniently located right just over here. Well, yeah, it was in North Mississippi, just outside of Oxford. And I grabbed it, did my uh, flight rating on it, and then flew it down here uh, doing one job with it uh, where I flew a whole bunch of DVDs over here. And it is sitting in Lampasas, Texas. Uh, so that's where it's at. I need to get a pilot for it. And in all, in all honesty, Sky Pigeon is going to end up being the pilot for it. Uh, but I've got him right now because I need some chemicals uh, at my Houston base. Uh, he is on shuttle service right now, and I'm gonna actually go ahead and send him out real quick because I need him to go uh, Purchase some goodies for me So uh, let me make sure that this is yeah, it's sitting at KDWH, so I need it to go To what's the name of the airport? I'm sending it to Hilo Charlie x-ray Oscar so a C O which is only like a 
30 mile hop it's not that far it's just right in north houston uh, he's just got to fly basically right up here and pick up some chemicals for me and bring them right back to the airport so why do i need chemicals because we are going to do a mission today so let's talk about the updates in the game um they've of course i told you that the tier two and tier three items that you make in factories were removed from all of the airports so no longer can you build something like automotive parts or pilot watches and then just turn around and sell them at your airport uh, you can't even fly them to another airport uh, which I had actually found that Baton Rouge was a more lucrative option for me than selling them at my local airport so I was actually flying the stuff over to Baton Rouge and selling it there and uh, which was pretty cool I enjoyed it that has been eliminated because you cannot purchase a tier 2 or tier 3 item which are the things that are made out of your factories you can't purchase or sell them at an airport anymore you either have to if you need them you have to manufacture them uh, and to sell them you have to do missions now what are missions missions are the latest uh, addition into the game and if you go to your jobs map you'll find a tab here that says missions and wherever you've got an aircraft you're going to find a mission whether that's at your base or parked out in the middle of nowhere so for example if we look at my base right here which is kdwh i select it you're going to see that i have two missions here i have one for emergency medical supplies and i have another one that was looking for aircraft engines if i come up here to land passes where the Grand Caravan is sitting, you'll see that I have different missions here. Supply coffee and supply mopeds and scooters. And then if I come over here to Kilo Juliet Kilo Alpha, my home base, you'll see that one dude's asking for wine and spirits. Uh, the other one is asking for aircraft engines. So those have come up. And then also up here where I purchased the uh, where I purchased my uh, caravan at up here at M09 uh, which let's see if I can get that to pop up here on the map by drawing everything in and remembering exactly where it's at it's somewhere up here anyways I know it's up here up here in this area at an airport that I was at I've also got a mission up here as well that I can go back and call back up as long as I find the airport and um, and mouse over it, which of course, now that I actually want to do that, I can't locate it. Eh, I'll find it. But the reason I wanted to bring that up is if you're at an airport and you come across a mission at that airport, it's still active even after you leave it. You just got to go back and find it, uh, which can be a challenge. Where is it at? It should be right in this area here. Hmm. There's another thing that is missing from this game. There are two things that need to be in this game. There it is. MS-09. There it is. And you can see there's missions at that, even though my aircraft isn't sitting there. I had visited that base and it put it in. I got 10 hours to get frozen food there, uh, or I got two days and 23 minutes to, or, or two, two days and 23 hours to get battery packs there. I wish there was a way I could flag that airport, but at the same time, uh, I wish there was a search bar in here where I could just type in the name of the aircraft or the name of the airport and it searched right to that airport for me. Uh, so I could go ahead and locate it real quick and be able to do something like that because I know that I know that's there I just have to uh, Call it back up and it's again. You've got to zoom into the map They've changed the map zoom as well on this to where the further out you're zoomed the less airports you see So I don't see nearly as many as if I drill down I start to see all the little airports as well uh, that are on the map um, that you can go to but the other thing is there needs to be a search for commodities you really need a way to search and say I'm looking for um, 
frozen food. Where's the closest frozen food to my airport that I'm sitting at right now? Um, that's not in there. Because one thing I have run into, and we'll come over here and we'll look at Houston. Because Houston's a prime example of this. At my base in Houston, I have a call for emergency medical supplies. I have sat here and played whack-a-mole with this game, clicking on every single red dot in Texas, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, Arkansas, and I have yet to find those emergency medical supplies. I don't think they're in the game. I think they got left out of the database, but um, it would be really cool if they had that in there because to do these missions, that's what you basically have to do. You have to take the airport into consideration that you're at, find the supply that you need to get, you need to go buy it, and then bring it back and sell it to the person who's asking for it. Now, the missions that you get, what I tend to see on this is you get one tier one mission and you get one tier two or tier three mission. Meaning that you get one simple mission that you can just fly out, buy the item, come back, and sell it off to the guy. You're not gonna get nearly as much money for it, and it's not gonna be as lucrative a deal for you, but you do get a tier two, tier three mission, which means you've gotta manufacture some things and sell it off, and for your effort, you're gonna get a little bit more money. So in my case, if we look at Houston, I've got two missions, one for emergency medical supplies. Those are tier one items. I should be able to find those somewhere on the map, go purchase them, fly them right back in. And then the aircraft engine, which is a tier three item, I would actually have to manufacture that and then sell it off to the person uh, once it's manufactured. Now you'll see it asks for, it tells you what item you want, how much the person is going to pay you, and what the maximum number of items that you can actually sell that person is. And this is to limit the amount of money that you can just cook out of a factory, where if Emma here would take an unlimited supply of aircraft engines. I could sit up a you know aircraft facility in Houston and just pump out as many aircraft engines as I could and sell them to her for three thousand one hundred and sixty eight dollars and I could make a small fortune doing that. But by limiting it, they tell me she'll only buy 153 pounds, which means I'm not gonna make nearly the amount of money that I could previously by just making aircraft engine and selling them at any airport that's kind of cool that gives you something to shoot for it does limit it it slows down but i'm going to tell you right now it's not really going to slow the economy down because the prices are still out of whack i was a little bit concerned in the beginning uh, that the prices weren't going to be high enough to actually pay for the factory but then i sat down and crunched all the numbers and found that it's pretty ridiculous um, this particular job here she's offering to pay three thousand one hundred and sixty eight dollars for 153 pounds of aircraft engines uh, and then over at my base in uh, Gulf Shores, I have another aircraft engine job that will pay $2,868 per pound for up to 677 pounds of aircraft engines. So if I were to make the total of 830 uh, aircraft engines and sell them off, I could make right around $2.4 million. That's a pretty good chunk of change considering the fact that the cost involved with setting it up and buying the materials is only about 700 and I don't know 750,000 right in that area so that's what we're going to do today uh since they implemented that in and I've got those two jobs we're going to go ahead and set it up make a base do the production and then we're going to sell off our goods and make a little bit of money so let's get started as i told you sky pigeon is running up here to kcxo which is right here he's flying from here to here and he is picking up chemicals and bringing them back to the factory i already had him do one run and i'm gonna have to build some factories here it's gonna cost me a little bit of money as i told you the cost involved in this can get high but if you can pay for it and get everything sold off in time, you'll recoup your cost right out the bat. So factories, we're gonna create a factory 
And the items that we are going to need, if we go to the items tab and scroll down, we're gonna need an aircraft engine. Aircraft engine is four machine parts. That's a tier one item, it's easy to obtain. Electronics, which are a tier one item, easily obtained. And avionics, avionics is a tier three item that we're gonna have to manufacture. So that means we need a base, uh, a, a, a facility to make the um, engines and a facility to make the avionics. Now, avionics, if we do the breakdown on that, we have to have electronics, again, tier one. Battery packs, that's a tier two item, which means we gotta build a factory to make that. And plastic, which is a tier two item, we've gotta build a factory to make that. So in order to fulfill this contract for aircraft engines, I've gotta build four factories, or at least I have to have the ability to make four different items. You can do that a couple of different ways. You can come in here and you can manufacture, you can open up a factory, and we're gonna open that factory in uh, Houston. And you can have that factory produce whatever goods you want it to produce. So, our first one that we need to make is a plastics factory. Now, I can put as much into that factory as I want. So, if I want to make plastics, I could make plastics and battery packs at the same facility. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to put the plastic in here, which is made with chemicals. Come down here to the bottom. We'll put plastics in here. Now, in all honesty, what I would really rather do is make this into a plastics, fireworks, and fertilizer factory because all three of those items are made with just chemicals. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a plastics and a battery factory or battery packs factory because that's what I need right now. Eventually, I'm gonna open me a base over here in Galveston where chemicals are only nine bucks and I'm gonna build a plastics, fireworks, and fertilizer factory and I can cook out whatever I want off of the chemicals that are available there at Galveston. So that's my game plan anyway. For now though, this is gonna be uh, Houston and it's gonna be battery, oops, battery and plastic. All right. So I'll go ahead and open that and it's gonna cost me $20,000 for the plastic, $40,000 for the battery packs. All right, so that is now open. That's $60,000 out of our account, but we have that up and running so we can go ahead and get it going. Now, as I said, I've already brought some uh, chemicals over. So if I go to my battery factory, I come down to stocks, I'm gonna move those chemicals over so we got 800 of them moved over and I'm going to go ahead and start the manufacturing process on the plastic, which takes two uh, chemicals to make one plastic. So with 800, I've got 400 that can be made. I'm going to go ahead and add that to Q and it's going to start building the plastic. The next thing I need to do is get the battery facility up and running. Uh, since I'm making 400 of those, I want to make 400 battery packs. And again, if we look here, it'll say battery packs, one electronic, two batteries. So we need 800 batteries and 400 electronics. So we're gonna go to cargo and jobs and passengers. We're gonna come to the jobs map, commodities and stock. We are here at KDWH. I'm going to purchase the electronics, which I'm gonna come in here and buy those. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy 400 electronics at this time. All right. And I'm gonna go ahead and buy 800 batteries. And I'm gonna go ahead and get these started so I can get my battery packs built. Because I've gotta get the plastic manufactured and the battery packs manufactured before I can even think about starting the avionics. So 800 of those. Here we go. And now I can go back to the factories tab, select my factories, the battery and plastics go here. I need to add those uh, over from the storage at the airport. I need to move those over into the factory. They're there now. Then I click on the manufacturer tab, the drop down. I select the battery packs. Now I'm making 400 of these. 
It's going to remind me that I need 400 electronics, 800 batteries, which we know we have that. So we'll go ahead and hit add to queue. Yes, we want that done. And you can see that it's making the plastic and the battery packs are in queue as well. Over here, you can see that it's already manufactured 10 plastic and in a bit, it'll get 10 batteries and all's going to be good. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and make our facility to manufacture the aircraft engines and the um, and make the avionics. They're going to be quite costly. The aircraft engines is $200,000. The avionics is another $200,000 to make. Now, if I look at my finances, I probably don't have that money. I got just enough to do it. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll go to factories and we'll go ahead and make this item real quick. Open up and we're going to do this again at the Houston facility. So we don't have to travel as far. Go. And again, I put the Houston there. So I know, and then I'm going to call this, uh, aircraft uh, motor and avionics. No. Go ahead and select these up real quick. Aircraft engines and avionics. There we go. You can name these whatever you want to name them. It doesn't matter. I just kind of put like an abbreviation for the city and then what's made at the actual facility. The other thing I wish you could do in this game and hopefully they'll revise this down the road as well. If I build a facility that only has like one or two things in it, I wish down the road I could either decommission that bait, that facility and get a percentage of that money back. Or I wish I could go in and retool that facility uh, and add things to it. So for instance, the chemical, uh, the factory here making batteries and plastic, I'd love to be able to go in. It's got one slot left on it. I'd love to be able to go in there and add something else into that slot. Same thing with the watch factory. The watch factory is only making one thing right now. I'd like to be able to retool that and put something else in there that could be made because every factory has three slots, but there's no way to actually go in there and do that, which is sort of a bummer. Uh, you know, again, I wish that was actually done. Um, in the same sense that when I open up the base in Galveston, and I put the factory down here in Galveston with the chemicals, I would like to be able to just uh, go ahead and do all that stuff. And then I could just completely get rid of the, uh, the, the plastics factory here in Houston and maybe get a percentage of that money back uh, that I put into that factory, but uh, not necessarily the case. All right, so that is up and running. We've got our factories ready. So basically at this point, when I get enough uh, materials manufactured at the battery and plastics, I can start moving those over and start getting the avionics made. So just to show you how that works, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the shipping side of this. And since I have 20 plastics made, I'm gonna move those over. And I'm gonna go ahead and move the battery packs that are over, because it's already made 10 battery packs. Those are being moved from the factory to my airport hangar or my airport storage. And now I'm going to open it back up again. And I've got to select the, uh, the avionics factory, which is this one right here. I got to select it. And now from the airport hangar, I can move over both of these. Good. And then I can begin the process of manufacturing uh, my avionics, which means for the avionics, I've got to go pick up some electronics and it takes three electronics for every, uh, avionics that we get. It takes one battery pack, one plastic, three electronics. So we're going to go into cargo. We're going to go to jobs back into commodities. I'm going to make sure that I'm on this airport. If I come down here, I've got electronics. We're going to be making 400 of these, which means I need 12,000 and I probably don't have the money. So let's look. Well, I need 1200, right? Not 12,000. 
1200, 27,600. That should be enough. I should have enough in the bank for that still. I do. All right, so that's 400 of those. Back to factories we go. Back to the uh, motor and avionics facility. Move the electronics over. There we go. So now I can go ahead and start production on those. Uh, I can only build 10 right now, but I'll go ahead and manufacture. Queue up 10. Add that to queue. It should get going. So if I do this uh, in stages, I should be able to get a little bit done and sell them off to the to the person asking for the motors as they're available. I can go ahead and sell them engines and I can keep selling them engines up until I fulfill the entire mission, which again, the mission is calling for um, 153 pounds of them. My goal is to get this 153 pounds done so that I get it done within the next 17 hours. Once I get those fulfilled, then I'll work on fulfilling the other 677 to take over to my base airport over in Gulf Shores, which at that point I will have flown the caravan into here. I will load up those engines and fly them over to, uh, to the Gulf Shores facility. So that's the game plan anyways. But let's look at our finances, how much we got going here now because we're probably going to have to take out a little bit of a loan uh, to go ahead and finish up and fulfill this order. I've got $27,000 uh, left. To manufacture the engine, I'm going to have to purchase four machine parts and two electronics for every pound of engines that I make. But what I can do is if I do this in stages, I might be able to avoid taking out the loan. I could buy like... 100 I, I could buy like 400 parts of the machine parts and um, a couple of hundred electronics right off the bat and just work on making like a hundred motors right now and see if I can do that without having to take out the loan but if I need to I've got a loan available now I've got like a million dollars in credit available now so um, we'll just do this in small spurts until we start bringing in some money and then as i get some money in i can do some more so uh we'll go to the commodities tab and i need machine parts which are here and again they're 48 dollars a pound um and i'm gonna need hmm, i'm gonna need just to get started i need about 400 of them so let's go ahead and buy 400 of those. We should be okay. There we go. That's 19,000. Buy that. And then we'll just buy whatever electronics we could afford at this point. So let's go ahead and buy. What does 100 get us? 100 will work. We're actually going to be able to pull this off without having to take out a loan. Pretty excited about that. All right, so now I go back to my factory. And again, I'm going back to the avionics uh, and aircraft motor facility. And I'm going to go ahead and push the rest of these um, electronics and machine parts into the factory. So I'll move that over. And I'll go ahead and move that over. And that's good. Okay. Oh, you know what? I manufactured the wrong thing. Let's get in here and manufacture the right thing. Avionics is what I needed to make. Let's go ahead and queue up 10 of those. Add those in. All right. And then we already have 10 aircraft engines made or in queue. Because I was looking at it, I was thinking, well, surely by now it would have made an avionics pack. Uh, but it didn't. So the avionics are making now. And as soon as the avionics are made, it will start making the aircraft engines. 
So we can go back over to our uh, battery packs and we can see that we've made 40 plastic and 40 more battery packs. Those can be moved out. So let's move those out from uh, this facility. So move the plastic out, move the battery packs out. Again, they're moving those from the factory to the air, uh, airport hangar. And then I select the other factory and I'm moving them from the airport factory, uh, the airport hangar back into the factory to make the motor and the avionics or the engines. Oops, I moved the wrong things. Move to, move to, here we go. All right, so 10 avionics have been made at this point. So in just a minute, our aircraft engine should get made. And we've got, at this point, we've got enough stuff to make 40 avionics. So I'll go ahead and manufacture another batch of avionics. And I'll just start whittling away at this. Q. And so we can get some money back in the coffer as soon as our first set of motors and engines is made. I'll go ahead and sell off the 10 engines and uh, get a little bit of money recouped off of it. And again, I can just keep selling those engines until I've reached the fulfillment on it. You don't have to do the whole lump sum at one time. Um, I like doing it that way because I like seeing the big numbers roll in, but you can whittle away a little bit at it at a time. Uh, that way you don't have to, you know, go out and take out a loan and pay that 10% on it. All right, so I'm back here at this facility. These are still cooking and making items here. There came in some plastic and some battery packs there. And if we go over here, we've probably got some engines. We do. We have aircraft engines. All right, so to sell the engines off, we come in here. We move those from the manufacturing facility back to the airport hangar. And now if we were fulfilling the order over in Gulf Shores, I'd have to load those on a plane and fly them over there. But because there was a mission in this town, I can go ahead and I can go to the cargo jobs, the jobs map to the mission, select the mission, and you'll see down here at the bottom, it'll say supply goods. And I can supply her with 10 at this point from my base storage area and I can get paid commodities supplied so I've gone ahead and I've supplied her with a little bit of the aircraft engines but you can see I can still sell her 143 more engines of the total of 153 that I could sell before so I just have to over time whittle away at that and uh, we'll continue to make money. So yeah, now you check our finances. We're back up to $37,000. We were down to just, you know, a couple of thousand a little while ago. So um, you can see, you can make money to it. It's a lot of steps that are involved now with doing the missions, but you can make quite a little bit of money by doing it. It's gonna take a little bit more time. It's not gonna be as easy as it was before. But in all reality, you're still going to make ridiculous amounts of money by doing the factories. Um, it's just kind of crazy. So uh, I will continue to whittle away at this. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and let this run. And I'm going to work on managing it and get everything built up. And then once I get the complete fulfillment order ready for um, my facility on Gulf Shores, we'll load up a plane and we'll fly them over there. So uh, we'll check on our pilot. He should be on his route. If we refresh real quick, it will say that he is positioning to KCXO and he's got the Skyhawk. He'll be there at uh, in about 20 minutes. So it's gonna take him 20 minutes to get there. Back to the factories and we'll go ahead and manage them one more time uh, before we wrap this up. Uh, batteries. I've got uh, 20 plastics done, 20 battery packs done, so let's move those out. So move those, and move those, and go ahead and close that. Go back to the, the motor facility, or the engine facility, and move the battery packs 
and the plastic over. It can get a little confusing. That's the reason, make sure you name your stuff so you can figure out what's what. Okay. Uh, and then over here, I've got 20 avionics that are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and add 20 aircraft engines into queue. Let's go ahead and set that up. Add to queue. And both of these manufacture at the same time. So don't think that, well, the engines aren't gonna make until the avionics are made. They all they all work at the same time. Um, but the one thing you wanna avoid doing is don't put like two sets of avionics in queue at the same time. I have had an issue before where if I had one set of avionics making and I added a second set of avionics in, when the first set of avionics ended, the second set of avionics just disappeared as long as, as well as all the materials for that. Now that was a glitch early on and uh, in reading some of the notes in the forums, it does seem like that's been patched and fixed, though I'm a little gun shy of it and honestly I'm not willing to take the, take the chance right now uh, to go ahead and check that. I might later on, I might like put 10, um, you know, 10, 10 plastics in queue and then put another 10 plastics in queue to see if that works and see if there was issues. But I knew, no, if you were trying to do two batches of the same items, uh, it would glitch out and, and you'd end up losing your materials for the second batch. So, um, just be aware of that. So sometimes it's better off just to let it do its thing in time and then queue it up in you know once the avionics is done then queue up the next set of avionics in all honesty if i can get ahead of the game and let this thing just run for a while um i will right now i'm just micromanaging it because i'm recording a video trying to explain how to do it what i will actually do down the road is once i build up enough money to build uh, the next hundred motors or a hundred engines. I'll buy all the parts. I'll put them on here I'll queue up a hundred avionics. I'll queue up a hundred aircraft engines and then I'll go drink coffee or go fly a route somewhere and then I'll come back in a couple of hours and sell off the engines that are made and um, That's normally the way I do it normally I put everything in bulk into there queue it all up but again because I'm trying to micromanage this one because I'm making the video and two because well, my money's thin, and I honestly, I don't want to take the loan out. I'd rather just do it this way, sell a little bit, make a little bit, sell a little bit, spend a little bit, make a little bit more, spend a little bit more, make a little bit more. At the end, I'm going to get ahead of the game, and I'm going to make a whole lot of money. So, but anyways, that's that. So you guys can see how that works um, and how the factories work. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is construction. I haven't really done a whole lot of this yet. I've been messing around with it on a test account. I don't have the resources right now to be able to do it on this account. We will do it down the road. Uh, once I get about a million dollars built up, we'll build a construction facility. And what I'm looking at doing is coming down here in the Fort Lauderdale area and building a construction facility down here uh, to build aircraft. And that's what the construction facility does. Construction basically allows you to assemble aircraft at a location. You have to build a base just like you would with a factory. Then you would build a construction facility, but a construction facility is quite expensive. It's like $800,000 just to build the construction facility. But once you build it, then what you do is you come to the jobs and cargo, you go to the jobs map, and you come down here to the parts shop. And at every airport that you visit, if you look under the parts tab, you're gonna see parts for aircraft. Each aircraft has a little bit of parts scattered all over the place. And if you find all the parts you need to build an aircraft, you have those shipped to your construction facility and it will turn around and manufacture an aircraft for you. Well, you might think, well, that's, that's interesting. The thing about it is the construction facility can make you a ton of money as well because you can build an aircraft for a fraction of what it would cost you to purchase it and then you turn around and sell it or you could fly it in your fleet. For example, I want to build a caravan and I want to, you know, have a couple of super caravans to uh, or super cargo masters to haul around. 
the reason I'm going to build my construction facility down here in Miami is I've searched this area and I found this is just rich with the parts that I need to manufacture a super cargo master. Here is the cockpit and the fuselage. You basically need a starboard wing. You need a port side wing, cockpit, fuselage, undercarriage and tail section, plus an engine. Once you get those, I think it's six parts all together. Once you get those together, you put them into your facility and you manufacture. Right here in this whole Fort Lauderdale area, I've managed to find all the parts I need for a Super Cargo Master. Here at KBCT, I've found the Super Cargo Master engine. I've found the starboard wing. Uh, down here, I find a cockpit and a fuselage. And so right here in this one corridor, I've managed to locate all the parts I need to build the plane that I want. So I'm gonna build a base down here somewhere build a construction yard down here and then I'll start buying and purchasing these parts and bring them in and at the end of the day for about three hundred thousand dollars I'll be able to build an aircraft uh, that would cost me a million one new to purchase so um, that's the way the construction facilities work and again I've messed around with it a little bit uh, over on my test account but I haven't really messed around with it uh, in my actual gameplay because again I don't have the money to be able to to start up a construction yard uh, but that will come eventually by the way if you if you didn't see how I got all the airport map dots on here you can come up here to the top and you can filter out everything that you don't want if you want to get rid of all the job lines you can click the job lines off if you want to draw in all the airports you click draw airports and to get rid of them you just unclick it so that's how I got there but again hopefully down the line and I see several people uh, asking for it in the forums as far as uh, looking for a way to search commodities there really does need to be a way to search it even if it like I said even if it's just something as simple as um, being able to put the air the the distance and the commodity you know if you had a box where you drop down and you said I'm looking for um, emergency medical supplies within a 200 meter radius or, or 200 nautical mile radius of my airport uh, that would be cool that would be really would make a lot of things because it's funny I see the developer and other people talking about they don't want to take away the ability to speed up time in the game because they have a limited amount of time to play the game so they don't want to spend you know their three hours of game time trying to take a flight across country in real time they'd rather be able to speed the game up totally makes sense but at the same time I don't want to spend three hours of my day pecking through all these red dots to try and find a commodity that I want to haul when at the end of the day I'm playing this to haul cargo you know so hopefully that's going to get added in and hopefully that will alleviate some of the time spent trying to find some of these items that uh that are listed here for you to do on your mission so but anyways hope you guys uh enjoy that little update on the missions and what's going on in this again in the next video we'll do a little bit of flying we'll uh, we'll either be in the caravan or i might just go ahead and do a flight in um in the chieftain man again i love the chieftain having a blast flying it uh i understand why so many people like it it's a it's a really killer plane um Let's go ahead and sell off a, a couple of more engines real quick and check our status. All of our avionics are done, so we can go ahead and queue up another 20 motors or 20 engines. Keep calling them motors. Duh. I'm sure I'll get some hate on that. It's called an engine. Uh, and then we'll go into manufacturing and we'll queue up at this point. Um, let's uh, let's actually do this. Let's move some battery packs over first, because I know we've got we got 50. See, we're starting to we're starting to get caught up here. So we'll move that over. We'll move that over. Then I'll come here. I'll move the battery packs over and the plastics over. I'll move two. Move two. So now I can queue up, um, what, 80 of these? Or 70, I got 70 battery packs. And I got plenty of electronics. 
So we'll queue up 70 avionics this time. Select avionics. Queue up 70. Two. Okay, those are manufacturing. And then we'll take our 20 aircraft engines. We're gonna move those out. Here we go. We'll go to cargo jobs, jobs map, missions. I've got to select the airport that I'm at. There we go, and that's gonna bring up my uh, aircraft engines, and I'm gonna go ahead and supply another 20. They supply 20, and hit OK. And we had $37,000 the last time. Now we have finances. Now we have $100,000. So those 23 engines, yeah, those 20 engines netted us about, uh, you know, $63,000. Yeah, I'll take that. As you can see, we're going to make a boatload of cash off of this. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks again for all the comments, you guys. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this series and are liking it. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. I don't claim to be an aviation expert. I just am somebody who enjoys gaming. I do try to keep it real, um, you know, and have fun at the same time. And if I can provide a little bit of information that will ease your transition into the game, uh, hopefully it helps out uh, a little bit. We'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. Have a great day. See ya. Bye-bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, I hope you consider giving it a like, maybe even sharing it with your friends. It does help me out a tremendous amount and is greatly appreciated. Also, leave some comments down below. That's really the only way I can gauge if you guys are enjoying what's being put out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want daily notifications. I try to do a new video each and every day. Also, if you want to stay in touch with me and find out what's going on, our social links are down in the bottom left-hand corner. Twitter is where I usually announce schedule changes, live streams, and new video releases. Facebook's a great way to get in touch with me if you have any questions to ask. And of course, I am trying to get to a thousand followers on Google+, which I know I'll probably be old and gray before that happens. But if you can jump over there and follow me, it would be super awesome. So if you like today's video, there's a whole lot more content on the channel. I hope you'll browse through it, find something to keep yourself entertained until the next video or live stream. Speaking of live streams, I try to do them nightly around 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Until the next time, thanks again for watching. See you soon.